All right, uh, Rikura Kahi is the producer of a documentary which surprised me when I watched it on TVNZ Plus last night, a documentary called No Māori Allowed. It is, in my opinion, one of the better New Zealand documentaries I have seen in a long, long time. And whilst uh, you might think its uh, content is confronting, I found it informative, I found it very well made, and I have, as a result, been recommending it to people as fast as I can for the last 12 hours. Um, I wanted to talk to the people who made the documentary. It was so good. So, Rikura Kahi, producer of No Māori Allowed, uh, joins us uh, by phone now. Rikura Kiora, welcome to the platform. And can I say congratulations on what I think is a very good piece of documentary making? Kia ora, Sean. Thank you very much. Tell us about the genesis of this project. It tells a part of New Zealand history and in some ways living history that I had not heard about before. How did you get on to this story about Pukekohe? Well, I think as you saw in the documentary, uh, Robert Bartholomew has been, um, you know, touring around Auckland, um, sharing his books, because there, there are two books. And um, one of our, um, other, our other producer came across it and uh, I actually had some um, had read it before that uh, because my um, my Aifano and Pukekohe and they were interviewed for the book and they weren't all happy about the final book and and what was published and I think it was more around um, Pukekohe and their homes being um, termed as sons. Um, so the way um, he described. Um, their lives they weren't happy with and so I, I, I had read the book before that um, but then uh, he was really interested in being a part of the documentary and so I uh, went to our Kui and Kaumatu and Pukekohe and asked if they'd like to share their story and you know 2021 um, was when we started the documentary and it was a bit of a challenge uh, of course sharing um, their traumatic childhood and um, the life that, that, that they lived in Pukekoi is not always easy. And you can see that in the documentary. Oh, man, absolutely. Uh, Those are gut-wrenching stories. Yes, yes, mm. absolutely. So that, that basically is, is where it all mm. came about. Is yeah, just, now, look, you know, I have to ask because, you know, I ask these questions, how much money did you get from the government to make this? Uh, in comparison to a lot of documentaries, next to nothing. Yeah, <laughs> now, and that's why I ask. Yes. So what yes. was the figure? Uh, around 200000 Yeah, that's that's, nothing, that's nothing, nothing for the quality of what you produced, uh, to be honest yeah, with you. Um, we, 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 over a year. Yeah, of, look, what um, I liked about it was, and I'll be honest, I watched an interview you did on Breakfast TV with Maddie McLean. Yes. And I thought, oh, God, I'm going to hate this. <laughs> and then I, I I'm going to hate this. It's going to be woke claptrap. And then I realised, <laughs> actually, I was taking that lead from Matty's sort of post-colonial Pākehā hand-wringing interview of you. And I thought, yeah. I'm going to watch it with an open mind. And I sat down and watched it last night. And I really do, do mean this. I think it was one of the best documentaries New Zealand content documentaries I have watched in decades. Um, and I think you managed to avoid, Rikura, you managed to avoid being preachy. Yeah. And people said, oh, I don't want to watch it. I don't. A lot of Pākehā on social media have generated a bit of a storm. They say, I don't want to watch it and feel guilty. But it didn't make me feel guilty. It made me interested and engaged and emotionally engaged in a part of New Zealand history I didn't know about. Was that your intent? Because it doesn't... Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We, we, we never, never intended to be preachy. And I think, you know, these old, two old queers, especially sharing their stories, that was the main focus of this documentary, um, to reveal a past that most of um, Aotearoa New Zealand have never heard about. Uh, so that was absolutely the intention, not yeah. to be... Yeah, and they said, oh, you didn't make me feel guilty. The other thing, and I'm not sure if you intended to do this, 
I note that in the documentary you had, and it's a you know, normal device in documentary making, you had headlines from newspapers of the day that shows that the news media recognised that what was happening in the segregation in Pukekohe was not the norm. And that is mm. why it warranted newspaper stories in the Star and the Herald about the practices of segregation in Pukekohe and to me, in some ways, that gave me comfort and thought, God, the news media was saying, Pukekohe's pretty racist, even back then when it was happening. Yes. And those were a lot of the discoveries um, that um, Robert shared with us. And so when we were going through all of the information that he had, um, we were taken aback as well um, by the coverage. And as you say, um, segregation in New Zealand was absolutely not known at all. And there was, you know, um, spoken about and in articles during yeah. that time. So Pukekohe was the exception, not the rule, because I think, can I be honest, I think the cultural risk you have is here is that a whole lot of Pākehā or people might say, oh, they're going to say we were all terrible racist and New Zealand was full of segregation. I actually mm. think the documentary does say Pukekohe, for a whole lot of reasons and giving its geographical location, its history was probably the worst place for racism in that time. And they had a white supremacist mayor, which probably didn't help for exactly. a, a couple of decades. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, and the, the, you know, the White League um, found a home in Pukekohe, and, and that is absolutely why um, Pukekohe, uh, more than any other town, became a town that was segregated and heavily racist. Mm. And you're not suggesting in this documentary that anyone is practising racism and segregation like that in the current time in New Zealand, right? No, we aren't. But we, we do, um, as Catherine um, Kamehide, the young school teacher, mm. um, says in the documentary, there's still racism in Pukekohe, um, but not to the extent, absolutely not to the extent. How, that, how does that, that exist? Uh, just through, you know, racial slurs and behaviour within the township. Yeah, but and, I didn't see any of that in the documentary. No, and and, and we're not putting, um, shining a light on here and now. What we are saying is that it did exist and mm. how do we heal? Yeah, and, and that was the other thing I thought about the healing was mm. um, all you can do is say sorry. You can't turn the clock back, can you? But I did get the very clear feeling that sorry did actually mean something if it came from a council or from an official body, as it seemed to me those were the bodies at the time who allowed these terrible practices to flourish or, or to remain. Um, yes. And, and you didn't get a feeling of revenge. You got an incredible feeling from the um, documentary of sadness and regret. Mm. And ennui, mm. I guess, would be the word I would use. Yes, no, you're right. And, you know, more than anything, we do have a council there who is looking towards what does healing look like for these alquia and these kaumatua who don't necessarily have um, whakapapa ties to the area but move to Pukekohe um, to work in the gardens. Um, so, you know, that that is definitely the pathway that we're um, looking towards in the documentary is how do we find healing? And, um, you know, sorry is, is huge for these queer. Yeah, sorry does mean mean something. Uh, what reaction have you had? What sort of viewership have you had uh, so far to the doco? Uh, mixed, mixed uh, reactions. Um, as you um, shared on, on your platform, uh, we've been celebrated. And then on the other end, um, you know, definitely a lot of racist um, comments, and um, but I, I think sparking the, the the conversation has been um, probably the, one of the great wins of this documentary is that we're talking about it. Yeah, we, we need to. Yeah, and it's not a nice little period of our history. Um, no. But as I say, I don't take personal. Uh, you know, as someone who's Pakeha and comes from, you know, um, European stock, I don't take any guilt away from what happened. I think it was wrong, um, but I don't feel personally responsible um, mm. for it. And I guess that is the problem that you face with a lot of Pākehā is there is a a natural human instinct to say, well, it wasn't me, you're just trying to make me feel guilty. And there's a hostility that rises in people. And I'll be honest, I recognise that when I 
saw your interview on breakfast and I really had right. to sort of say to myself, man, i got to stop knee-jerking. I've just got to watch this thing and see what comes out of watching it. What are you working on now? Um, I'm on a crime drama at the moment in the producers and we're filming in the Waipapu area. Yeah. Um, so it's very different to um, the documentary No Māori Allowed. Um, yeah, but uh, what I really want people to take away from this documentary more than anything is this is part of New Zealand history and we yeah. do have to confront it. But we can all work through, you know, what has happened to find healing and um, yeah. some understanding of um, a history that has shaped who we are right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and look, confront our history but not each other, maybe? Yes. No, exactly. Exactly. This is not um, a tool to be used to go out there and go, I knew it, you know, you guys are, were racist from the start. How could you subject Māori to all of this? It's not a- absolutely not that. And if you go and um, watch the documentary with an open mind, and I hope, as you have, Sean, that you don't feel like it's your fault because it, it isn't. Mm. It isn't. It's absolutely about talking about our, our history and and how we move forward from there. And we have. We mm. have moved forward. And i got to say, the kid, one of the amazing things, TVNZ can make a piece of rubbish like F-Boy Island and then it can... <laughs> 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 and then it commissioned, can commission something as good as this, you know. It's a funny old world we live in, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Are you going to show it internationally? Are you got plans? Yes, we are. Yeah? We, we um just now um, preparing for it to go to several um, festivals and we've already had uh, very good feedback. So um, it will travel. It will absolutely travel. Yeah, because it's a, and also fundamentally, I come back to take away the New Zealand context. It is an incredible story, and, and look, that story, um, the story of the woman and her mother being beaten down in the shop. Um, that is, and I guess you recognise that as the apex of the dramatic engagement of, of what what you've made. Um, so raw, and I look. Someone o- online last night said, "Oh, how do we know that's true?" Oh, you watch it, you know it's true. Yeah. You absolutely yeah. know it's true, and it is. Uh, look, it's a remarkable piece of filmmaking and a remarkable moment. So I think it will travel, and I think audiences from outside the New Zealand context will get what a good piece of of filmmaking it is a- as well. Um, yes. Um, I hope you don't drive yourself nuts doing the crime drama in the Waikato. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you make more documentaries because I think we could do with them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean. Um, Kakete, you have a good day. Thank you. Uh, that is uh, Rikura Kahi, producer of No Māori Allowed. And I think you get the very clear view that I think it's a wonderful piece of filmmaking. And talking to her confirms to me that it is made with good intent and made with integrity. Uh, with integrity. Wondering about Harvey Yemeni's bloody integrity. Any luck, Ben? Still, no? No, no, no. Well, we're just going to have to live without him. He owes us one. We'll get him back on tomorrow. We will get him on tomorrow. Uh, we don't know what happens here. It does happen occasionally. Um, Sean, great interview. I su- I'll suggest to my girlfriend that this weekend we watch the documentary instead of F-Boy Island. Uh, I can't bear to watch another second of that show. Jesse, I haven't watched a single second of that, that show. I loved your reaction when I put that on it. Because it is a strange world, isn't it? TVNZ can make what I consider one of the best pieces of filmmaking I've seen for a long time. And then we have F-Boy Island.